Mmm, smells a lot like Volvo gravy. What's up guys, it's Drifts and Lifts here. All right, so today's episode is one you've all been waiting for. Finally, we are taking the panel wagon for a rip. Um, so I actually haven't taken it for a really good rip yet with this setup. It's all tuned, done at post haste performance here, and uh, I'm super excited. So just a little overview of the car, guys. We have the BMW ZF transmission installed if you haven't seen the last video. Um, if you saw the last video, we had it tuned at like 450 foot-pounds of torque and like 430 wheel uh, horsepower. But as you saw in the video, it was lifting the head and uh, we ran out of fuel pump. So since then, I put a new Walbro 525 fuel pump in it. And then we actually detuned the car a little bit just so the head would stay put. Um, so it's running about 395 wheel horsepower right now and about 410 foot pounds to the tire. So um, still really savage, but uh, it's not quite cranked all the way up to what it could be right now. But uh, we're going to take it for a sick rip. I got my good friend Cedric with me. And he's gonna come for a rip. He actually has his uh, Toyota Soarer on the dyno here at Post Haste right now. Uh, Dan's tuning it on ethanol. It's like fully built, pretty much drift fully car. Built. Yeah. Okay. As, as you guys can see, Cedric's in a wheelchair. He actually operates that car with hand controls. So he's like a chair slayer, but better, really. Yeah. But better. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's my version of chair slayer. But cheaper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, the wish version of chair slayer. Pretty much. <laughs> All right, okay guys, uh, let's hop in the wagon and go for a rip. So I mounted the GoPro to my helmet so you can get a full experience of this ride. My e-brake's pretty poop. Pretty poop? Yeah. yeah. I should like take this jacket off so I can do perform stunt maneuvers. enough of this transmission feel it's just so tight and notchy um, any m46 factory transmission I've rocked has been like pretty sloppy so it's nice to have a solid feeling shifter so fun now. <laughs> That's so fucking wild. 
right guys, so uh, this transmission is super short now with this 373 rear differential. So um, what do you think, Cedric? It's wild, <laughs> definitely wild. I like a little bit more power so I can spin it all the way through and forth will be said. It feels like you are. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's crazy guys because normally a corner I'd do third gear in I think I'm actually gonna have to do in fourth gear now because uh, Third is like it's almost like a 2.5 of the other transmission. So But super sick this thing rips so good. It's so fun to drive now slip and then it like grabbed out. So we got uh, Harvey in the car now. Hi. So uh, I'm gonna take Harvey for a rip. So if you guys noticed on that last couple, uh, that one of those pulls there, it actually, we thought it blew the axle shaft, but I think it actually just started slipping the clutch. Um, so I might have set the preload of the, of the slave cylinder, or sorry, of the slave cylinder a little bit much. Um, I might have to trim a little bit off the slave cylinder rod because it might be slightly pre-loading the pressure plate. So, and not giving it maximum clamp force. Should we do a donut here? Yeah. of the setup guys uh, honestly I think it could use a little more gearing in the rear I think it's actually a little bit on the short side I think because we have a lot of torque with this setup it would actually benefit from a longer rear end ratio we're running a 373 right now and maybe we could go down to like a 330 or something would be a bit better because um, like third gear is still really short like um, I don't know what it exactly redlines at as far as wheel speed, but I think it's like 120, 125, maybe 130. Uh, the M47 transmission in third gear, you could get it up to like 160. Um, so if we could get like maximum wheel speed in third around the 135, 140 kilometers an hour mark, I think that would be perfect. But it feels super good. 
I'm stoked to just have like a car that rips good now. Hopefully this thing holds up. Um, we built it fairly solid this time. You know, it's got proper rods in it, new bearings and stuff. So it should be good. guys so we got the car back at post haste now so initial test drive went super good um oh it's so fun to have a car making 400 wheel horsepower with a proper tranny that i can just bang gears in and not worry about um gave my good friend cedric here a little bit of a scare definitely just like just like me cedric says he doesn't really like riding passengers it's just kind of just the feeling of being out of control you know i don't know i, I don't blame him I, i'm actually personally not a huge fan of riding passenger in people cars unless like I know they're an incredible driver and just like dialed of that day, right? Yeah. But uh, people are sketchy. <laughs> you can die with them. Um, but yeah, so uh, like I said, guys, super stoked on the setup. So um, we're gonna film another video for you guys soon where we actually take it out and do some drifting with it at an undisclosed location, probably in Mexico or something. Just take a little peek under the hood, make sure everything's all good after that abuse. Um, yeah, it looks all good. As you guys can see over here, the catch can is like spraying a bit of oil. So um, I just have this rag over it so it doesn't go everywhere. But uh, that's kind of be, to be expected because you know, you're gonna, you're gonna throw some oil up through these tubes, no doubt. Um, especially this one that's coming off the factory PCVs, uh, the breather box. So, you know, it is what it is, but the good thing is the oil is going back down to the pan. And uh, you, you'd think that this would be like really bad because it's, you know, putting moisture in the oil, but oil's so hot, you gotta remember that the moisture evaporates really quickly. And that's actually what we're seeing right here is uh, just a bit of moisture buildup mixing with the oil and just coming out the catch can breather here. Um, no big deal. I know you guys are thinking, oh, that's gross, but um, to be expected because we did use the stock rings. I didn't have, I wasn't able to get a hold of new rings. So these are like original piston rings, so they're not perfect, obviously. And uh, it's still the stock original pistons and that kind of thing. So, um, you know, it is what it is. But yeah, like I said, guys, overall super happy with the setup. Um, we can push this setup a little bit harder once we get our head studs and our different fuel pressure regulator. This is a three bar. I'm gonna be running a four bar. So uh, that'll up our, you know, potential with the 1000 cc injectors a little bit. Um, this turbo is like getting in its upper range of the compressor map, um, but I think we still can push a little ways. This, this turbo should do 500 horsepower, like absolutely maxed out. Um, if we can get 450 next time on the dyno with a little bit more fuel, a little bit more boost now that we have the bigger fuel pump, um, I'd be pretty happy with that. So another 50 foot pounds would be super sick, um, but you know. Right, guys so i got a bit carried away wrenching on this thing um i had to fix a little bit of an oil leak on the transmission it was actually seeping out of the reverse sensor plug so um i just pulled that plug out because it was like a really weak aluminum style and i just put like a motor drain plug in it from uh, lordco so should be good um shouldn't have any leaks i was just under the car everything looks pretty clean um since that rip so like you know no oil leaks really no coolant leaking from anywhere no fuel leaks nothing like that so car is solid i'm super stoked guys so i want to give a big shout out to post Ace performance because um i could have not have built this car without them um they've helped me tremendously with like just everything everything to do with the car really um you know letting me use their hoist to put the zf transmission in and uh that kind of thing so and of course can't forget dan's incredible tunes that he does on this thing um you know it's really nice to have a professional do it for me uh, that's been in the business for 20 plus years and uh, obviously I don't know how to tune cars myself so um, you know post taste has helped me big time on building this thing so if you guys have any projects you want done shout out to post taste performance go check them out uh, link to their website is in the description of this video so yeah um, but anyways guys I'm gonna leave you there for today so I hope you enjoyed that quick little rip in the panel wagon we're gonna film some much more 
aggressive drifting with this in the near future. I just wanted to take it for a little ride around the block and show you guys kind of what horsepower and how it feels inside the car. Um, like I said though, we're gonna get head studs in it and increase our uh, fuel pressure to the four bar. And that's actually going to give us a little bit more headroom on the fuel side of things. Um, we should be able to push it a little bit more if we want. Uh, you know, maybe go back up into the 450, 475 horsepower range. Um, then we can really push the setup, see what, see how much it makes. But at the same time, I don't want to go too, too crazy and just run this thing on the ragged edge constantly because uh, I want it to be reliable. Every single time I've put this car together, it's basically blown up and uh, costs a lot of money. You know, I don't have a ton of money these days. And uh, if you guys want to help me with that, um, check out the Drifts and Lift store because we still have hoodies for sale, stickers and beanies. Um, I have to sell all those or most of them before I can like get new designs. So. Um, yeah, great way to support the channel if you guys want. Check out the Drifts and Lift store. Link is in the description of this video. But anyways, I'm gonna leave you guys there for today. So like and subscribe for spicy Volvo mayonnaise. Peace out.